what's going on everybody now this video is going to finalize our series how to create your own chicken breed and we're going to get straight to the information right after this short intro are you ready Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just get right into the info. I'll do the haze and thank you for coming in in just a little bit, but I kind of want to format this like a regular video. So this content or this live is actually going to be aimed toward the people that watch it after the fact, at least for the first half. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. First, I'm going to post the link for the people who want to come in later because I got a bad memory. So there you go. Okay, I got a few pictures I'm going to share too, but uh, for the first part of the video, we're just going to talk about the final, this is the final episode of the Correct Your Own Chicken Breed. I'm going to go ahead and summarize really quick what we did, and then the rest of the little bit of the information is going to be the whole entire series summed up. So if you haven't watched any of the series, the information I'm getting ready to talk about is going to bring you up today and then finalize everything. So really, this is the only video you're probably going to need if you're interested in doing it but <clears throat> since it is our most popular video uh, i figured i'd go ahead and and do the final video because i think i promised four in our last live streams so like i said i'll get to the haze in just a little bit but i'll go ahead and start getting right into it so let you guys know last year uh we came out with a series called how to create your own chicken breed and we didn't exactly give you the what two breeds that we started with, but we kind of gave you a roundabout. So we did start off with a heritage breed, full-blooded or a full-size uh, heritage breed hen, which was a gold hen or a yellow hen. Uh, and the male was a um, also a hybrid, but it was a black bantam chicken, a feather-footed chicken. So once we got those... Uh, two chickens bred we had like I think four or eight of the eggs hatch once they hatched what we did was as you guys follow us along we let both of those chickens grow up uh, we showed you what male and female that we had elected in a like future breeding uh, so to speak just a scenario so we picked the male and female we showed you guys those two specific chickens and then we showed them to you after they was grown enough to breed and show you what the male and female look like. And then we talked about how we would proceed forward. Now, we nicknamed that breed the Onyx Fire Breed. Some of you guys may remember it, some of you may not. But if we wanted to continue making that same breed, the Onyx Fire Chicken, all we would have to do was continue breeding the small black male and the large yellow female in consistency, and we would continue getting the onyx fire breed now later on we would eventually have to throw in a little bit more outside blood but it would have to be really close uh but line breeding is important and we'll get into that just a few in just a few minutes so anyway that's pretty much all we would have to do to continue making the onyx fire breed okay now so we're up to date that's pretty much as far as we went now we're going to talk about how you would take the same breed or any breed and, and talk about how we would pick the same two chickens or whatever your favorite chickens are and breed them and come out with whatever you're going to be coming out with and then want to do forward with those to make a sustainable breed that will continue repeating itself stereotype every time you breed so in other words we're just going to tell you really quick um, <clears throat> the final information on what we do here how long it takes and so forth so we're just going to start over. We're going to show you guys a couple of pictures and we're going to start up from or what I call start over, because if we want to continue having those hybrid chickens called the Onyx Fire, we would have to just continue breeding the same two chickens that we bred in the first place to get them. 
So when we're going to breed, we need to remember when we start doing our own breed. Just a few keys before we get started, and they're really easy. And I promise I'm not going to get into a bunch of genetics. And like my old friend Chuck from Life with Belinda and Chuck picks on me about, you was Xing and a Y and a big letter and a little letter. And uh, you was talking about recessive genes and dominant genes. And we're not going to get into all that, I promise. We're going to keep it simple. And I'm going to show you guys everything you need to know right here. But you do need to remember a few key things. Not all, you've heard me say it a hundred times. Not all blue chickens are going to breed true. Now, this here is a picture of our very last hatch of blue lace red wine dots. These are the last chickens. We no longer have them on our homestead. They're all gone. The rooster's over there to the right. Okay, so if we took this rooster and bred him to one of these hands, which is exactly how we got these chickens here, we're not always going to get blue chickens. We're going to get 50% blue. The other 50% is going to be separated by 25% black and 25% splash, okay? That's how it's going to work out. Now, if we took the blue chicken and bred him to a black chicken, we would just get half and half, okay? But we're not really going to try to spe like specify colors right now. We're just going to stick to making a more sustainable breed. But you do need to remember, what you're trying to do is make a breed that does not do this, and I'm going to teach you how. In other words, you don't want to breed to where when you put two colors together, that they're going to breed and give you different colors. The wine dot is specifically the blue lace red, as you see here, is always going to do that. That's their trait, uh, and that's what they're supposed to do. But every time you breed chickens, you're going to get a cross between two heritage breeds, which is known as a hybrid, right? So you want to take that hybrid and get it breeding back true, called a self-true breeding chicken. Now I'm going to show you a few pictures of those and explain what I mean by self-true breeding chickens. Now... Another chicken that will not breed true, even though they're blue, is what you see here is a blue cochin or blue cochin bantam. Bantam is just a different size of that chicken. So this is a blue cochin. These guys will not breed true either. So if you had, which we do have a blue hen to go with him, but when we breed them, we get the same results. Even though they don't have penciling, their main colors when they breed and the chicks come out from two blue chickens of the cochins will be the same. It'll be the black the blue and the splash right so now we're going to look at some selfing or some true breeding blue chickens now what you see here is the father of the baby chicks that we have just came in the mail this is a french blue copper moran rooster now even though this guy looks a whole lot like a blue lace wine dot or his blue inside of his uh underbody here looks uh like a whole lot of other blue chickens this chicken will breed true every time now, it won't be an exact uh, replica, but it'll be really close. And then the more you breed, which we are going to talk about line breeding, when you do line breed, you'll get mostly the close stereotypic chickens from the mother and the father. So I'll show you the mother to the chickens that we have, the new chicks. This is a female French blue copper moran. Now, every time, like I said, we breed these two together, we will always get the same results. There will be, now it's not going to, like I was going to say, it's not going to be perfect every time. There will be like a few different shades of blue, maybe a little lighter. You'll get some, it's just a little bit darker. Uh, and they'll lay some lighter eggs and some just a little bit darker, but there'll be slight variances in each one, right? This is what you're wanting to do when you do pick your two chickens of whatever they may be and put them together. You want to continue breeding until your chicken don't give you any more hybrids. Uh, but they give you two solid colors or the same results every time. And that's what you're looking for. So here is our chicks. This is an exact picture of our chicks that we did get in the mail from those two, male and female, which we do not own the male and the female of these chicks. This is just the five that we got in the mail. So, again, these chicks will breed true when they grow up. Now, here is our Coach and Bantam show chickens. A lot of you guys know about those. It would be the same thing once we breed them, but it's a little different. If we took one of the darker model coachings, and if you can tell, we have um, a dark rooster and we have a light rooster, right? And then we have a light male and a light female. So if we took our darker male or lighter male, either one, it doesn't matter, and bred it to the black female that you see there, we would get the same results because... Uh, blue is not a dominant trait, right? 
So what's going to happen is if we breed those two together, we're still going to get that 50% and 50%. You're not going to get a mixture of anything. However, if we took either one of those hens other than the blue one and bred these chickens together, they are true breeding chickens, meaning every time we breed them, we will get a result of a modeled Cochin Bantam. But I brought this picture up because I want you guys to notice the variances in the colors, which is exactly what we've done with these chickens. We line bred them for the first time, and this was the results that we got. So we still got model chickens, and they are full-blooded heritage breeds. But we did get variances in the colors, but every time we breed, we will always get some type of model coaching bantam. This is our third generation, so most of the females are pretty much replica of the mama. Same everything, temperament egg laying ability, everything. It's just a little bit different shade in the colors. So now let's go ahead and show you guys exactly what you have to do to create your own chicken breed. Okay, so I'm just going to use this as an example. Uh, and this is a pretty good example. I'm not going to say it might, it may or may not have been done before. Okay, so this is a, a heritage breed coaching rooster. Let's say we took, this is what you wanted to do, but you can use any male you want. You just have to remember it don't need to be a hybrid. It needs to be a full-blooded chicken. Whatever it may be, it don't matter. It needs to be a full-blooded chicken. Okay, so that is a buff coaching. Uh, it's a full-size heritage breed, not a bantam, right? So let's say if we took him, and i got to open up another picture here. I may have to go faster. Three, four. Okay, let's say we took that yellow rooster and bred him with this Wine dot hen. Now, both of these are full-blooded, I know, because I own. So, this lady here is about two years old. She was our second hatch. I know she's a full-blooded black wine dot, but she is a result of us breeding two blue wine dots, the ones that don't breed true, right? So, she was one of the black that we got. So, if we took that yellow rooster and bred this black chicken, and we got, say, our result on the chicks looks something like this. Now, this is exactly what you probably would get if you bred those two chickens together. You would get the wine dot look here. If you can see my mouse, I hope you guys can. You can get the perfect wine dot chick here, which is exactly what this guy and this guy looks like. Uh, you would get pretty much some of those. You would get probably more. But you would also get some of the dad. You would get like this guy here. You would get a perfect copy of him. That's what they look like as chicks. Uh, you would get this guy here. That looks like the dad. I know that's the solid traits, but you're also going to get a mixture of those two, which is why you bred them in the first place. You're going to get some variances like this guy here, this guy here who was a little shady, but you can tell he's already starting to get a mixture of two, where that black is starting to be diluted a little bit, turning into blue. We may not see penciling in them right now, but chickens always change as they grow and molt. So also some of these yellow guys is another variant. It's not as dark, but they're also getting some different colors and shading in there. And we also have a result of it almost a solid black chicken. So now what we would do from here is we would pick whatever result we like best out of these chicks, right? And you'll take the rest and remove from the breeding program and whatever they may be, range chickens or egg layer chickens, whatever you're going to do with them, but you remove them from the breeding program. And you take whatever two chicks that you chose, and it's very important to line breed. Now, line breeding is the same thing as inbreeding. It's really important. We wouldn't have the chickens we had today if it wasn't for inbreeding. However, you can't do it consistently. But it's really important to do it at least the first time to keep the traits, desired traits that you want, especially when you're crossbreeding. Okay? So we'll take all the chickens and wipe them away and take our favorite two chicks and we'll breed them again once they get old enough. Once they get old enough to breed and make sure your chickens are at the right age, you don't rush it, guys, because you'll get better results that way. We'll take those chick chickens and we'll put them together. When they have chicks, you're going to get pretty much the same thing you see here, but you're going to start seeing differences happen. And what's going to happen is you're going to get a whole lot more results of these variances, even though they may not be the same. You'll get more variances and less of the mom and dad solid traits. It won't be much, but you will start seeing more. Each time you have a hatch, you do the same thing, right? But you only line breed once, and we will maybe condone two times. But after that, you'll have to start bringing in outside sources, which is the exact same chickens, 
but not brother and sister chickens, right? And there may be color variances in those chickens as well, but after your first line breeding, you have to bring in a new bloodline. So you bring in your new bloodline, you raise these two chicks that you uh, selected from your second time around. Of your variances, you pick your favorite two variances. Again, take all the other chicks away. Now, your variances can be your favorite five chickens out of all of these and breed them all together to one male. That's perfectly fine. Keep however many variances you want. Make sure you do have at least one male. You can pick two. Wait till they grow up and use one of your favorites. So now we're looking at our third generation. So once you breed this time, the outside blood needs to come in and you'll need to swap one of them out. Usually, I like to swap out the rooster because the hen is the one that decides the sex when it comes to hatching your baby chicks. The rooster can only make male chicks. That's all he can do. So the hen decides the actual sex. If we replace that hen that is giving us a good ratio of females, we may replace her with another male, uh, female that will only give us, say, 90% males. And that's really possible. So if you're getting a good ratio, you want to replace your, your male first before you get your new bloodline in and replace your female. All right. So bear with me, guys. We're almost done. We're pretty close. So once you get that done, you keep breeding your variances in. And every third generation, you add new bloodline back in. Right? You'll get more variances and eventually... You'll weed out all of the mom and dad. You'll have all of these wine knot colors here gone, all of the solid yellows, all the solid blacks. You'll weed all of that out. Every bit of it will be gone. And what you'll get is a whole lot more of these variances that you're looking here where I'm pointing out with the mouse. And again, sorry, guys, I'm not doing the hellos or answering chat. No, not yet. But then once you start breeding these variances that you have and you see all the mom and dad and the grandma and grandpa traits not coming in, and you're, you're just seeing those crazy variances between the breed. Then you take your favorite variances and you start only breeding those and weeding out the ones you don't want. So, for example, let's pretend like we don't have the black and the yellows here anymore. And we only have these weird looking blue and faded lavender looking chicks here. So out of our favorite, we would take our two variances that we would want to breed closer to. And you may have less chickens at first. But that's okay. You don't really worry about the number. You worry about the variances and what you're picking on what your choice of what each specific breed is supposed to look like, right? So we'll take this guy here and this guy here, and we'll make sure that, remember, we do need a good ratio of male-female. We have to have a male. So I always want to pick more than two chicks and wait for them to grow up. Now, what we're going to start seeing in our third and fourth generation is the exact same two variances. Now, you won't have anything like a breed that shows like a sex link between the male and female, but you will have less variances in the colors. You'll have maybe two or three to choose from. All right. So we're almost finished. You continue doing the exact same thing until you get the variances you want. Now it's important to continue line breeding after every third generation, which is really easy to keep up with guys. Because adding that new bloodline is going to continue to help your new line stay sustained and i'll explain why really easy because the more you in line even though it's really important to line breed your chickens the more you inbreed your chickens in succession or down the row the more they're going to revert back to the parents genetics because you're still breeding the same line together even though you're getting variances already if you continue to breed that same bloodline without bringing the same two chickens from a whole different place but they got to be the same two chickens back in. Uh, then they're going to slowly revert back to mom and dad traits or even grandma and grandpa and skip mom and dad. And then no matter how many variances you get, it's going to be harder for you to weed out the mom's traits and the dad's traits and continue getting those variances. So how long does it take? When we created the Midas Gold Breed, uh, it's so far, this is like our 12th year. But for the breed to be considered sustainable and always breeding true, it'll take 10 years. Now, I know you guys are going to see these big 100,000 sub channels talking about exactly totally the opposite of what I've just said. A lot of people talk two to five years. That's bull crap. You can't get even half the genetics weeded out within five years, much less three to five. It, you might as well, if you're going to do this and you're going to do it serious, you're thinking about getting your breed recognized 
by the National Poultry Association, that can take 30 to 50 years and even longer. There's breeds that's been here for thousands of years that's been accepted by the, the uh, Poultry Association, but they have color variances. Same chicken, been around the same time, and those color variances still have not been accepted today. So it'll take a while for you to get it, you know, if that's what you're going for. But 10 years minimum of you continuously breeding, line breeding and bringing in new generations. You can do the same thing with plants. You can do the same thing with dogs. <clears throat> that's how all the professionals do it. The only difference is with chickens is the line breeding. Like we just discovered in the last five years that chickens are the closest living relatives to dinosaurs. So therefore, when you line breed chickens, you're not going to get all the crazy deformities and everything else that you would get when other species of beings do inbreed. You're not going to get that with chickens. So it's not really going to matter. What you are going to get is you're just going to get reverted back to those older dinosaur genetics of the grandma and grandpa. Now, mostly that's what I've experienced anyway is when you when you like breed too far into it without bringing a new bloodline in it goes it skips the mom and dad goes to the grandpa and the grandma genetics so that's it now i will show you uh just a little quick picture to show you what happens when a true bloodline like ours minus gold breed's been around for 12 to 13 years and i was talking to my bestie jules about how we had some a bloodline from the outer fence come in. So what happened is we have a minus gold hen that's uh, a much she's a she's a much lighter hen than the rest of them because the hens are really big. They get up to ten pounds, and that's like Jersey Giant weight, really. So most of them can't make it over the poultry netting, but this one can, and she got out. And one of our other free range roosters, which is one of the Onyx Fire Reject chickens. Uh, took up to her as soon as she got out of the fence. We didn't know at the time. I didn't even think about it, actually. So we just picked her up and threw her back over the poultry netting. And a, a few days later, we started letting them. We had a hen go broody, and we just let them start hatching. And we got uh, our minus gold breed was like, and I like to call it infected with dirty bloodline. But anyway, here's a picture of those chicks. Now, the water bottles. If you guys purchase the book, The Poultry Scrolls, you'll see one of the water bottles are in here. I'm not even going to get into that. But anyway, they're there for a purpose. But if you can look, all of these are minus gold chicks, right? But some of them are crossbred minus gold. And they are the eggs that came from the mom that jumped out of the fence. Most of you guys look and say, well, I really don't see a whole lot of difference. But for me doing it so long, I can. And we only have two. We have a minus gold breed here. A minus gold breed here. Uh, the lady that laid these eggs is at least five years old. That's why there's a least amount of ratio. Uh, the other hen that jumped over the fence is lighter and younger. She lays more eggs. And all of these others are the crossbred chicks. They're the result of the chicken getting over the fence. Now that these chickens grew up, uh, we still have a few of them. We've sold a bunch. But they have a boatload of blue down under those yellow feathers. I'm not surprised if they're all not going to be solid blue with some yellow pelting in it. So, uh, yeah, either way, we got we got all that straightened back out, and we have all of our bloodline true again. But it does happen, and that would be a result right there of somebody just wanting to take an off-breed chicken. But still, again, it needs to be a full-blooded male and female. But uh, that's it, guys. Pretty much that's all it is. It's just diligence. You also have to remember – egg laying capacity and color uh, the structure of the bird you got to know a little bit about judging poultry when you're picking your next bloodline you just don't want to pick just off of color traits or leg color or things like that you want to make sure you pick healthy chickens to go forward each time or you're just going to mess your own bloodline up so there we go i'm going to take a quick drink here uh, now that i got the information out of the way that's it that's all you need to know uh I'm not even going to post the links to the other videos. <clears throat> Actually, because I don't have a keyboard right now, but that's it. I'm going to close this picture down so you can get the big full effect. Now I'm going to try to say, hey, that everybody is coming in or everybody that's came in and left. Sorry, that's how I wanted to do this video, the fourth one. By the way, I got the link down there if anybody wants to come up now and chat with us. 
If you've got questions, I'm going to try to go back through the chat and read them all. Say hey to everybody. Boone, hey, sweet lady, love you. Hey, Patty, big hugs. Uh, what's up, Jake? What's up? How you doing? Uh, Barb, how you doing? If you're still in here, thank you for dropping in. Brother Jules, what's going on, man? Howdy, y'all. Joey and Donnie, good to see you. So, I'm going to scroll on down a little quicker. Hey, so, got nobody. Lynn and April, what's up, man? How y'all doing? I see Rick, Amy. What's up? Nah, you ain't almost missing. If you did, you wasn't missing much. Rick, what's going on, buddy? How you doing? No test, no test. Just try to keep it simple. Tina, Ladybug, how you doing? Southern Food Chef is what I call her. All right, I think I covered everybody. I didn't expect a whole lot of people in here because not a lot of people like to talk about straight up just breeding chicken. But anyway, I'm going to try to post a link back again. I guess somebody wants to come up and talk. We ain't got to talk about chickens now. I'm done with uh, what I wanted to do, but I did want to do that fourth video, but just do it like a regular one, but make it a live stream. Let me copy the link. And don't worry, y'all, I ain't going to get mad if you can't come up, but I did say I was going to post it. And I'm not on YouTube, so I don't know what I'm missing over there. But anyway, that's it. It's pretty easy, plain, simple as I could get it. I promised I wouldn't do all the A, B, X's, Y's, and all that stuff. But that's it. And if you have any other, I'm pretty sure if you go back from the very first video, video and watch it all, there's a whole lot more detail to it. But to sum it up, that's exactly what you need to do from start to finish. And uh, diligency and a whole lot of time and a really good eye on picking them. And it's not that hard. Anybody can make their own chicken breed. All right, I'm going to bring Patty up while I get me a drink of my magic potion here. Hey, hey everybody. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. It finally cooled down here. We had like five days in a row, or almost in a row, that was over 90 degrees here in May, in early May, and that is that was a record breaker. That doesn't normally happen. So, yeah, and got the the garden build has started. I'm not gardening yet. I just have tomato starts going, and that's about it. So. It's, I know, uh, I <laughs> you're gonna love, you're gonna love that. Wow, that matting that you guys got down. It's just, I yeah. love my so far. I love it. And that I, one, the thing I found out that the one that has the yellow line in it, that's the one you want to get. Yeah. Um, I'm very close to a horticultural supply guy here, and he's really knowledgeable and loves working with small nurseries and stuff like that. So he was a wealth of information, and so that's the second time. I bought that. We bought that for the other garden in Portland too. And it's good stuff. So the only problem I have with it, I found out the other day, I, I shared it with the members video, but, mm -hmm. and I didn't really think about it. Jules and Boone. And if we had Amy, we had a bunch of people down not long ago and it was pretty hot, right? It was really warm. And we was yeah. all standing at the alpha garden and they was talking about the heat that was resonating off the black. Yeah. Stuff. So, yeah. Later on, after we planted our stuff, our bean tendrils, we was really late. Well, we weren't really late. Uh, they got like 14 or 15 inches long. And uh -huh. then we finally got our trellis up. But when the tendrils laid down on the black stuff, they burn up to a crisp from laying on top yeah. of the black matting. Also, we found baby snakes that had tried oh, to yeah. crawl across it. And they was turned like they was potato chip crispy. So oh. I got to think. Well, hold on. If a baby snake or a live animal can't make it across this thing without burning, yeah. I can't let anything lay on top of this stuff. I'm going to have to yeah. either put cardboard under it because I got melons now, yes. you know, laying on top too. So now we're collecting cardboard to keep them from burning up. To a yeah. point. So, well, I have, I again have moles and I'm also in farm country now. So I'll have voles and all the other things. And I'm trying to make this pretty simple. So I'm going to lay, um, 
some kind of mulch on top of it, which is not going to be bark. And we are right in the middle of filbert country here and everybody likes to do filbert shells. And I'm like, I'm not cutting the crap out of my feet or my hands either one because I've cut myself on the on my hands. It's really popular out here, but so I don't know exactly what I'm going to put on them yet. Probably some kind of, um, I don't know, compost or something like that. I can go ahead and plant right in it too. Hey there. Hey, you. hey, what's up? Can you not hear me? I'm getting reacquainted. They didn't log me in. No, you're here. <laughs> no, I'm talking about StreamYard didn't log me into my account. So oh. I'll worry about it later. So what's yeah. going on? Oh, yeah, that black mat thing. Yeah. We're supposed to run that squash around that corn bed. So I'm glad we experienced that. And you told me about the snakes and because uh, I'm going to use cardboard and <clears throat> try to keep it cooler, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I'll just put something over the top of mine because I have to anyway. It has to look good because I'm in a manufactured home park and the owner, you know, has his, I just, it needs to happen anyway. I'm not doing it like I did over in Portland. So it's outlawed. No, it's the park manager. I'm paying rent to a to an owner here, and ah. it's, you know, it's just let's keep things looking tidy. It doesn't have to be perfect, just tidy. And so I'm going to do something like that because I don't want to be walking on that black plastic. That stuff gets hotter in Hades in the summertime. That's what happened in Portland. Um, ah. But we never been passed away before we could get something put over the top of it. So, because the plan was was to put something over the top of it to keep it from being so hot. Righto. Yeah. Yep. So you can't just wet it down because it create a bunch of humidity. Yeah. So, but I had to do something because my beds are open. The ones I'm going to put on there, they're open at the bottom. Um, so I want to have, you know, I'll put something down and then put the beds on top of that and then fill them with what I'm going to fill them with. And so that'll be good. I think it'll work out pretty good. <laughs> and also, Michael, <laughs> the, uh, the other thing is, is the, I have what is called wood burn clay here and it is a notoriously sticky clay. So I was like, I, and everybody said, it's a good thing you're not growing in the ground. Because it would be a lot of work to get it to come up to where it's a better, better soil, and I just don't have it. My body's Moles. too down from that. Hey, hey, Tina, uh, you got a tomcat by chance, or a house cat? Or not? If not, just go to the hole and put you a piece of juicy fruit in there. Mm -mm. Doesn't work for moles. My husband tried everything. everything. The best thing is a gun. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> the best thing is a double barrel point. <laughs> you don't you don't ruin the man's and bowl with gum. It's always Patty that ruins your lives and they gotta get taken down. You can't say no, that. Come on. This okay. is the this is the new YouTube. Just hey, leave the girl alone. <laughs> You're picking on me. <laughs> I have hardly been on lives lately. Thank you, Jules. I really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> ready. Come on. Get tired, Amy. I thought it right after I said it. <laughs> you can't say the G word. I know. I'd like you. Everybody thought you couldn't say COVID forever, and everybody was not saying it. They're calling it the monster and all these other things, and it was long past. They didn't care. <laughs> so I don't know. I know they're crazy on on here. So, but yeah. but legend has it. And I know they tunnel on the ground, but uh, if you got an outdoor cat and can get them to go in the box or an indoor cat and take your urine and surround whatever beds you got, that's supposed to deter moles and voles. They do have, uh, it is actually, it's castor oil that they have. Um, you can mix that up and drench your soil um around the area you don't want them they don't like the smell of it or anything so and that does work a product that mole max i think it was um that works but hmm. all those wives tail things 
my husband tried them all. We have some good stories. <laughs> no, no, it's 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 feline urine, not human urine. No, I'm not talking about human. That's not what I'm talking about. Well, I we thought you said that. your husband tried it. I got no, confused. Not he tried the juicy fruit. <laughs> He even tried those stupid gopher gassers, those things, and they've got arsenic in them. And I'm like, thank you, honey. Next time you need to read that's in there because that's going to be where vegetables are growing. So there it is. Amy's got, Amy's got a suggestion. What? Well, my grandpa, he was Native American, but when he lived, worked, but I wouldn't do it. He had a whole big old infestation, like, like the holes was everywhere. So he plugged all the holes, but two. In one hole we just left open, the other hole he backed up to the lawnmower, took the dryer hose, yeah. hooked it up to the lawnmower exhaust into the hole and gassed him. It on the next, <laughs> it <was laughs> the next day. But we'll look at Amy's suggestion. It's probably more safe and much better to talk about. Uh, it might. Uh, I don't know about, like, when you'd have to get it down in the soil. Probably, I would imagine the oil, especially, I don't know, mice, I know that I keep hearing that, but I don't know if there's been any like, real serious things. Some of that stuff is just, well, it worked here, so it must work all the time, and it was something else that actually got them out of there. Um, what was I going to, anyway. Oh, I was going to tell you our story about what Ben did to get rid of them this one year. <laughs> this is good, propane. Do the same thing like he did with the lawnmower. This was at our house in Portland. Literally did this. And he ran propane uh, down, mm -hmm. the, down the hole and then lit it. It's a good thing that he didn't put any more than he did. He's pretty, he was pretty smart, so he didn't put that much in there. But we could feel the earth through this. <laughs> he killed yeah. three. We found three dead, three dead moles when we went to dig through that soil. I don't There's recommend doing that. And his whole yard like goes, it's crazy. Because he, he uses way too much. It's oh, gosh. Yeah. A little is, if, if a little works, more is better. <laughs> looks like, it, it looks like any smelly plant. And, of course, alliums, But marigold, you know, lavender. Oh, yeah. I love mowed mint. Casserole mixed with cayenne pepper. Actually, it says coffee grounds, castor oil, and cayenne pepper. Hmm. That's so that's UK. like a home recipe? Yeah, that's Garden World UK. Okay. Coffee grounds, castor oil, cayenne pepper. Well, I know the years ago when this when this first came out, the the product that they had, this Molmax, wasn't listed for use around vegetables. They hadn't really tested it to see if it would take up the castor oil. I don't know why that <laughs> people take castor oil. They just end up, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I like I like the Tomcat. I, Un, unneutered. They hunt them. They pee. Yeah. Never. I, used to, I used to have a 20 pound. I think it was bred with that weird semi feral right. cat. That, it's a big cat, but it's not quite domesticated. I think it was a cross. And it came from a feral household, big tomcat. We had no squirrel problems. We had no moles. Oh, wow. nothing. He just took care of business. He would he drag he would all. drag squirrels back to the patio alive. <laughs> like, you know, they play with mice. He would drag a squirrel back between his legs and play with a squirrel like it was a mouse. He was he was special. <laughs> Yeah, that is that is a special one. Usually, it's dogs that get the uh, moles. The cats. Yeah, get... you can, you can get a terrier. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I need terrier at my garden. <laughs> nah, it just, go, it just goes for the dens. <laughs> I he probably well, I've got moles that are underneath the cement pad out here. Along the the, 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 the roots house. are just collateral damage. <laughs> <laughs> He's not really after the plants. <laughs> yeah, we got them both here. Moles and bowls, we got them both here. Yeah. They're terrible. But that's that's right, Annie at Jack. You're right. There you go. Yeah, my dad was a my dad was a Marine down on the island of Mindanao in the Second World War, so Temper Fly, as they say. 
Your dad was in the Second World War? Yep, my dad was in the Second World War. What was he? Was he, was he 60 when you had you or something? No, he wasn't. Oh, okay. No, he wasn't. I'm not prying. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. I'm working. I'm working on getting a gig as an afternoon talk <laughs> show host. Cause you ever notice all the afternoon shows are women? Well, they wouldn't care. We have a guy afternoon show. You know, I get off at three. It's a bunch of old hens hackling on a couch. Like, where's the guy show? I guess it's ESPN. I don't know, but I don't care about that stuff. Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Is this like online or on television? Mainstream media, yeah. Mainstream. Are you Think watching, about it. What are you watching mainstream media for? <laughs> I don't. It runs like a TV, but it's just on. We have a house company. Can't say much more since we're live, but okay. Gotcha. Certain, certain people have to have activity going on, so yeah. they're not walking around looking for people. <laughs> <laughs> If you know what I mean. Call it diversion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I can't find any male talk shows. Yeah. But, you know, like male, you know what I'm saying? Like a male only. You'll see like a male or two on some or right. like 50-50. Yeah. And, I... and then all women, but there is no all man talk show. It's weird. You ever I... think about that, Patty? Um, I don't like talk shows in general anymore i mean for a long time i haven't liked them dodging the question like a daggone politician i don't, I don't, so I don't care <laughs> i don't care if it's here's what i here's my line i don't care if it's male or female as long as it is um it is a good conversation there's critical thinking involved and it isn't somebody just spewing their opinion like a brain well, animal that's under somebody you know. Well, that's, that goes to everything. You just well, that, that, that that's not mainstream media at all. Critical thinking. You said critical thinking, so that goes everything. It doesn't matter after that. <laughs> no. Yep. That's yeah. Like, no, I, <laughs> <laughs> that's like the one percenters, right? The critical yeah. thinkers. Yeah, <sighs> that's the true one percenter, the critical thinkers. <laughs> Look at prepped. Three foot. That's a that's oh, nitrogen. Nice. That's, isn't that nitrogen time? Well, I guess it depends on when last time you put it in. It depends on how tall he is. Well, Annabeth did a um, the daughter. She did a video and showed how tall the corn was. That was pretty good. And that was a week ago. Three feet. That would be yeah. Corn grows pretty fast. We're just at a foot now. Well, and where you guys get, if we were down where you're getting rain, but see, we haven't had rain here in almost two weeks now. I think we run out on the rain barrel. <laughs> we're already getting the summer dry. That's not good. I don't know. It could change tomorrow, you know. I hear you. That's nice. My corn is to my waist. Wow, that's awesome. It's going to be a good early crop probably coming in that early. Yeah, that's all it's done here is rain for 24 hours. It's got puddles everywhere. Yeah. I want to rain, but not a flood. Well, where I live, I'm kind of in a rain shadow. The um, rain will hit the city's... Uh, one side of us, and then I-5 runs parallel to Highway 99, which I'm off of, and it will run right straight up um, I-5. But it won't come over here. It'll go around the other side, too. So it's kind of just one of those weird things. Be right back. Okie dokie. Yeah. I'm not even going to try to do corn because there are raccoons like crazy out here. Skunks, too. That'll be fun growing a garden with skunks around. I've never done that before, so Let's see how it goes. Oh yeah, I bet it. I bet it will jump in in height. 
Oh, no, that'd be cool. Have fresh corn on the 4th of July. That'd be awesome. Yeah, well, it's what we usually try to harvest our melons. You guys are so much earlier than we are. It's funny. I mean, it's just throw them under an old shade tree after we pick them. Yeah. Pretty good for a while, but <laughs> we usually got to do it right up the July. Oh. Yeah. She loves you too, man. Uh, she's got, I don't blame her. I still, I would wait too. She's good, though. All's good. She's just, I guess, waiting on her set. Mm -hmm. She'll be here soon, though. No, that's good. I haven't seen, I feel like I haven't seen her in forever. Yeah, it's been a long time. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, I have two green stock planters. I bought one and then um, the old Arkansas woodcutter sent me one with soil and all the stuff to go in it. I couldn't believe it. I almost, I couldn't believe it. It's been it's so generous. That mark. I need a level place. That's my other thing. I need to make a good level spot to put both of them. Use strawberries in one. The other. Man, speaking of strawberries, we've had a really good year. Oh, good. Well, I think ours is going to be good as long as it doesn't when all of them start because they're just starting to ripen here. Um, as long as we don't get all of a sudden a bunch of rain and it just waters them to death. So we've had years like that too. Yeah, we've been picking ours for a while now, but they start to fizzle out. We go bye -bye. Oh, corn jelly. I've never had that. I've heard about it. The girls are talking about corn jelly. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, and, you know, I, I saw a video. Somebody made their own um, corn syrup, and it's not like what you get in the store. This is like a healthy version of corn syrup. So sweetener. I thought that would be something that would be good to learn how to do. My neighbor, my neighbor next door is moving, and so I'm getting a bunch of canning jars from her. I'm gonna get a pork swing too. <laughs> it's kind of nice. She's moving to Ohio with her family, her son and daughter. Yeah. Yeah, that Mark, he's a good guy. Totally surprised me. I didn't, there was no note on anything. And then I talked to him just before the green stock came in. There's one more thing coming. So, yeah, I got, I got some more stuff. Piled up there just waiting to be installed. Electroculture, that's when you run uh, lower voltage. Copper. It's the copper wire. Yeah, the, through there's a study in China, a one study, mm -hmm. probably the only study. Um, it's called on. There's one channel I found that that's the whole purpose of the channel. But I've I've seen other stuff that you know. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some stuff on it. I know there's something. I've seen some stuff on it. Yeah. Yeah. If it worked, yeah. it worked. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm watching with interest. I've got such a small garden out here that it'll be in, it wouldn't be hard for me to do it, but I want to see what everybody, how it does for everybody, and then maybe I'll give it a shot. Well, I'd be, where I live, I don't have problem with production. The problem is with pests. Oh, yeah. Well, and and disease, but you know. Well, yeah, the pest. If, if I could if I could control that impact, I don't really need anything to enhance anything, really. I mean. Yeah. What's your worst pest there? Would you say? 
Which plant? <laughs> what you, what yeah, so some people say, oh, it's got to be the squash borer. And then somebody else will go, you know, it's got to be the tomato hornworm or whatever. So. Uh, I can catch, I, we, can get, we get the hornworms out. Um, not even, not with the black light in the morning, all that stuff. We just stand and look, but you know, we're not growing rows and rows and rows of them either. So for us, it's not, hornworms aren't a big deal for us. It would be aphids. Uh, but disease wise, it's all the bacterial cause it's hot and humid. So, you know, Southern bacterial wilt is a big one. Don't get a lot. Of, I mean, you can't tell that stuff unless you send it into a lab. But as far as I can tell, we get the southern instead yeah. of the um, the V, whatever that one. I can't even remember it. But that's a colder. That's a colder one. But the fusarium is warm season. But I think our deal is southern. Verticillium. Verticillium is that what you're yeah, talking? Yeah, yeah, verticillium. That's more of a cool, cooler. Yeah. See, we deal with that problem. up here. Our worst, the worst thing that happens with us is the car, you know, the tomatoes will all get ready to rock and roll and then we'll get cold, get a cold rain. And we've had, matter of fact, I remember um, I was at a farmer's market and a guy came up to the master gardener table. I was talking to the gals. <laughs> he was practically in tears. He has an acre of ground in this, in this neighborhood and he was growing tomatoes for everybody he could find in the neighborhood. And he's done it for years. And all his whole crop was devastated within 36 hours. It was gone because of what? Of what? Late, late blight. Late blight. Yeah. Yeah. Late blight. And they get early blight too. But, and there's other things I've had other things. So tomatoes, some years they get hit and some years there's no problem at all. Well, aphids, I could deal with aphids personally. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't grow rows and rows. I can deal with those, but the bacteria stuff, just, you know, yeah. Can't once it's there, it's not much you can do about it. Yeah. Once it gets rolling. But you're right though. For a squash, it's actually both vine borers and squash bugs. Right. Come, it's the same. I'm trying to time it this year to go between the cycle, <clears throat> um, with the summer squash the zucchini yeah um you know the winter squash runs longer period anyway yeah so you, you're gonna run over both cycles down here we get two life cycles of the year so mm -hmm. you know if you're further north you can beat the cycle at some point but when you get two and you have a long crop you know 120 day crop you can't beat it you'll yeah. catch one way or the other yeah I think um, the most consistently annoying pest I've had, and this was in Portland though, was we had earwigs like there was no tomorrow a couple of years in a row. And they were they were snacking on everything. I couldn't hardly keep up with them. So mm -hmm. those were bad. And we do get cucumber beetles, but not very often. And the same thing with tomato hornworms. Now it might be different here. This is a different area, so I'm far enough away from Portland that it's going to be interesting. Well, on cukes, um, we get the beetles, of course, but again, virus mosaic. Oh yeah. Then you can't. That's over. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't fix a I mean, virus. You cannot fix. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, in in Portland, we had to. Oh, it was just insane. They were they worship trees there. I mean, it's just an outright religion. Um, yes. They want trees and all the little tiny. I had a little hell strip, you know, between the sidewalk and the street. And this was in urban Portland, and they wanted trees planted in there. They wanted them planted everywhere, and I had three huge fir trees in the backyard that by right should have been cut down, but we never did because it, number one, it was really expensive. And number two, we had to get permission. And Ben was like, no, that ain't going to happen. So they, they're still there today. As far as I know, they had a uh, bark beetle. So, which isn't good for those trees. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah, all the ash here on their uh, long-term cycle, I forget what it is, but it gets in there and eats. Ash for mm, Possibly makes like a spider thing on the mm. uh, vascular system. Right, on the cambium layer? Yes. And okay. so they're, they're all like all going down and they won't be back for 20 years. Yeah. My neighbor, my neighbor has one right over here. Me and my backdoor neighbor has told him, yeah, you got to take that down. Yeah. Uh, I, I might, if it hits me, I, my insurance isn't paying this time. That's a different story. We don't go down that road on sure. Michael's life. Yeah, but yeah, he's been told because he doesn't know what's up, but yeah. all, all ash trees are going to die. Well, they're all dead. Yeah. The they're birch, dead. Beetle, the birch beetle in Multnomah County, which is where Portland <laughs> is. And I think also Washington County and maybe Clackamas, they're all three right kind of clustered right close together. Um, the birch beetle is just killing trees right and left. It's been going on for a while, but you don't, and once you see signs of it, it's too late. Um, and so we didn't know anything. Look at that fella. Oh, it's a down under fella. <laughs> Look at that fella. Bradley, what's up? Thank you for coming in, man. Yes. Hey, yes. Uh, like I am from North Carolina, in case you oh, missed yeah. my yes. Yepper depper. And I have a spray program, and I've used BT before. That's probably one of the better sprays. Yeah. But I do use, though. I mean, I've used it before. I don't really got a problem with it because I got a spray program. Really, yeah. I rotate products. So, <clears throat> well, the one thing with BT is it takes <laughs> a day or two for it to actually do its work on the worm. But you can take the worm after you spray it and find a dead worm and just keep the dead worms and then grind them up and make your own spray because it's the bacteria that kills the gut of the worm and that's how they die. So, mm. there you go. <laughs> That's my tip of the day. Yeah, Amy, we lived when we lived in Georgia. We lived in a it was a twelve thousand acre uh, property, but only two thousand acres of housing, all in the forest, just like all in wow. the forest. And you could cut down trees within ten feet from your house if they were less than three inches in diameter. Wow, that's stiff. And there were no exceptions unless the tree died. But they couldn't just be a general threat like they might come over in a storm. Couldn't touch them. But, you know, we had everything in there. Beavers, bears. We had three mailbox posts. And when you came in, they had a sign up telling you, where there was a bear sighting that day, so you couldn't go to your mail. That was a cool okay. place. I mean, 10,000 10, acres wasn't developed, so we were literally living. Of course, couldn't, couldn't garden, could not garden. Oh, yeah. There's no. Not, mm -mm. Well, that would be interesting. Yeah, can you imagine if the tree was like over three inches? That's it. And yeah. was five foot from your house. And of course, we didn't buy it new. So we bought the house and there's trees. And I just thought, yeah, hey, we'll just knock them down. And then we got in there and there's big trees like five feet from the house. Oh, yeah. you, can't, you can't cut that down. Mm -hmm. So what's this family <laughs> Robinson? What is it? Robinson family or whatever. This family Robinson. Yeah, well, that thing. There you was, go. <laughs> what, what in the world, man? I don't, people like living like that. I mean, even with the trees that I have, the huge fir trees I had in my backyard, it was, well, and there was one in the neighbor's yard and others across the, you know, they were, they were all around. And it was really hard to garden out there. I mean, Ben fortunately could limb ours up. We actually had a friend who worked uh, for an arborist. He was a, he was a great guy and he was certified himself. And he got up there just like a monkey and just swinging around and just having a great time and limbed our trees way up. So we got sunlight down into the area because they were on the they were on the north side of the garden, thankfully. But their their limbs went clear over fifty feet to where our fence was, and you know the the roots would go past the fence line. 
because those roots Good. fit really. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but it was it was nice. And the big limbs that would fall out of those things, oh my god. You that know we were uh messing with the front of the house here. The porch is all messed up and I was gonna uh throw some mortar and some brick, seal stuff up for water. And mm -hmm. I got it, I did it up against the house. This is last October. While I had diverticulitis, we were doing this. And uh well we were we were gonna put in um underground gutters right and had our traps and push them out while we were digging that we found roots from this elm tree and the roots are like 30 feet past the drip line mm -hmm. and discovered that's what destroyed that porch mm -hmm. yeah. just it's all what do you call it what do you call it it's not what is that michael what? what's that what's it, michael what's the phrase uh, you what? know when it, when a road when somebody like lays a sidewalk and it's just not quite right. It's, what is that Appalachian phrase? Goggly, <laughs> swoggly, silly. Go what do you call that? I don't know. Soggly. Is it soggly or goggly? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> There's one we'll thing. Oh. We'll, we'll let you know the next time we get together. <laughs> Maybe you call yourself a hillbilly. <laughs> well, yeah, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus. Oh, yeah, we use that word out here, too. Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus. That's a good word. Yep. That's a good one. Uh, well, we have... Uh, not there are a few out here, but in Portland it was getting really bad. They had the Alanthus, the Chinese tree of hell, um, that springs up just horribly bad. And if you cut it down, you've got a, a forest coming up where the old tree used to be. And the only way to kill them is with a very high powered herbicide that's applied very carefully by someone who's licensed and all that stuff. Um, but the female trees and there's a ton of them around in my old neighborhood are just popping up seedlings everywhere in <clears throat> sidewalks and all that stuff. It, and they, their roots um, will invade the um, foundation. See you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Sure. See you, Rick. Yeah, they'll, they're really damaging trees. What, what tree is it? Uh, it's, I, I want to say it's Alanthus. I'll look it up here. Um, it's the Chinese tree of heaven is the it's common. It's totally West. No, it's not. It's, that's what it's called. But I don't know what the, what the scientific name is. I can't remember. Alanthus <laughs> altissima. I was right. Chinese tree of heaven. Varnish tree. The wood stinks. Literally, you can't use it for anything because it stinks. Um, I don't know that it has any good uses. But it's a very invasive species. It's actually outgrown hardwood forests in the East Coast area. The book, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, that book, uh, tree that came up in the sidewalk was one of those. Been around a while. Hey, Shaky, what's going on, man? Hi, Shaky. Hanging out. I don't know if I've been gone forever or something. I'm, I haven't seen people for a long time. Well, we're trying to go back every Sunday. I don't always do it, but we're trying to go back to it. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm I'm looking forward to figuring out what I'm going to do here. I just feel like I've been under so much. I've got a legal thing I'm trying to get cleaned up. and I'll probably be better once that's done and feel like I can have some bandwidth to actually do something creative. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I thought Joseph was going to get the books out on things. Oh, yeah. I'm looking for somebody I can buy your book for because I can't have chickens here, so it doesn't do me any good to, except for to help you out. Yeah, no, that sucks. I, I know a lot of people I wish could get chickens because they 
really could benefit from but they're, oh, yeah. in a, they're just in a I think they even have like two and then you got to pay so much because of water and all like you gotta pay to have them on your my, my neighbor's daughter uh, she has chickens and ducks so I got several eggs I've got well over a dozen probably a dozen and a half it eggs and I got a couple of duck eggs so I got to have a duck egg for the first time I want to I want to try baking with them so I need to find out thank you how to modify the recipe oh my gosh it's been a long time then ah since I was moving that was um that was way back like November of of 2022 that long I wouldn't doubt it. I just, boy, I tell you, because when I was over in the apartment in Happy Valley, I didn't get on too many lives. Thank you, boo. I love you too. Yeah. And yeah, I miss. It's been a while. And I miss these lives here. I mean, this kind of a live stream. Um, some of them I don't like going on because it gets kind of crazy and weird these seem to be i mean you can still have a good time and not be weird crazy you know what i'm talking about yeah where it just seems everybody's out of control that's good news shaky howdy howdy oh congratulations on that that's nice yeah that's really quite an important job Yep. Yeah, so. Yeah, where I live, where I live out here, I'm real close to Shriners Iris Garden, which is national. It's a national producer of, of quality irises and also the, there's a tulip farm. And then there's the uh, dahlia, Swan Island dahlias, which a lot of people know. And so I'm very close to all of those things, which is kind of nice. I feel like I got dropped into heaven. Here. Hmm. Oh, he did get the books out on you, Amy. That's right there. What's it say? It says Dictionary Smoky Mountain English. English? Oh, cool. I want one of those books. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. I used to read the used to read the encyclopedias when I was a kid. <laughs> 1891. Oh wow. Brown dialect, Tennessee. Cattywampus means twisted or careened to one side. Yeah. It's still used all over the U.S. I think mm -hmm. my my folks brought it probably from Iowa, and their their family some of them came from Missouri. Also, I think it's something like slaunched wise or something. Anyway, this is this thing is fun. Oh yeah. I bought it for Beth when we first met so she could figure out what my people were saying. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watch uh, I'm joking. That, gal, that gal Tipper that has celebrating Appalachia or whatever. <clears throat> it's a great channel. She tells stories and talks. Yeah, about yeah, I watch her. Really good. I really and she has a cookbook out now too. She has a couple. One of them's digital and the other one's what's up, Ted? Brand new one. And so that's <coughs> she's great though about all that kind of stuff. It was funny. I told you he's gonna get the book out on you, Amy. Yeah, I got I got a lot of interest. Yeah. You never get bored that way, right? Oh well, yeah, you do, then you move on. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like okay what's next i don't even feel like i ever get bored or I just, I'm living alone i shouldn't say that because now it's it's easier to get bored i was just telling Vin, i'm like forrest gump you remember how he went through all those phases but when he's really into something he's really into it yeah <laughs> <laughs> now yours is fishing there huh? <laughs> I'm his sister. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shaky. What's up, Shakes? <laughs> but, hey, well, who's talking? Look, this you got chicken book out. It's raising chickens, farming, <laughs> used to sing in a rock band. He's an artist. Now he's raising goats. Oh, my gosh. What's up with that? 
this guy. He's the one. Oh, yeah. What's up with that? Yeah, he's a, a, what do they call him? A renaissance man. <laughs> he's a renaissance man. Yeah. Bob. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Michael, you're the renaissance man. <laughs> a lot of them's like useless talent. So I yeah. will never be a goat whisperer. There's so much to learn about them freaking things. Mm -hmm. I know. I don't, so. I'll visit people's goats, but I decided <laughs> that I would never be able to own one. For one, the fence has got, you got to be able to hold water in to keep the goats in, pretty much. Because there's always an escape artist. Oh, yeah. In the crowd, I think the Nigerians go and heat like six or eight times a year. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, joy! <laughs> and we don't <laughs> cats about it. We don't have to have two pins, just keep them separate all the time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll bet, I'll bet Jennifer does love Tipper. I mean, she's she's just a peach, she's one of those people I'd love to meet, you know, sit on her porch. And, that's right, Jackie. I'm confused. Hold on. Yeah. Wait, it looks like he belongs in the Renaissance. That's that's true, Shaky. He could be. <laughs> <laughs> fit in pretty pretty well. Probably. Oh, yeah, that's better than Duck Commander. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Uh, how, after we met home for Halloween, taking the kids out to Bobby, I said, listen, I'm almost ready to go home and cut all this crap off. That's all I heard. People would go by and go, Duck Commander, right? No, dude. I was oh, no. Yeah, I was he ruined beards forever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I hope it didn't make Amy mad. Oh, no, you, you, you can do it. Well, actually, you probably can, but y'all don't think we said that. She's probably doing research. Get a wobbles. Get a wobbles. Yeah. Well, you, did you guys know that my granddaughter moved to Arkansas? Huh? My granddaughter is now living in London, Arkansas. She was out here and she moved with her boyfriend and then had her baby. Didn't know that. Yep, yep. So I'm a I'm a great grandma. I'm the mother of a grandfather now. <laughs> wow. Nobody ever says it that way. I always say things weird ways, but <laughs> I, was, I thought it was pretty crazy. But yeah, I've had pictures up on my Facebook of little um Amelia Rose is her name. So she's a month old now. Amelia Rose. Amelia Rose. That's nice. Yeah, it has a really, it has some really good meaning to it too. So I like that. Nah, that's for you, Amy. Mm. <laughs> Get your goat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a really nice name, Amelia Rose. Good night, Shaky. Have a good one, man. Thank you for coming in. Yeah, good to see you, Shaky. Take care. All right, Shaky. Take care out there. Yeah, but Amelia's uh it's a very not, pop but it it's popular? It is very popular right now. Yeah. Oh, I thought it would be the opposite. So it's coming back. Yeah, I didn't think it was gonna be popular either. And then when I went on live, like, holy cow, there's a lot of Amelia's that were or babies that were born they named Amelia. But it's very pretty. Well the I next one is coming back too. What? I heard Bartholomew is coming back too. Bartholomew. Bartholomew. <laughs> Bartholomew. <laughs> Bartholomew. <laughs> then, <laughs> next time, I convince her to, to name the child Jamie Bell. Very rare. Jamie Bell. There you go. Jamie Bell. <laughs> Jamie Sue. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> I like Billy Earl. <laughs> Billy Earl. <laughs> it's Billy Earl. So. Oh oh to Billy Earl. That's a good one. I love it. it. I was like, I'm thinking it's really good, you know, because when we were in school, if we got in trouble, you know, the teacher make you write your name a hundred times or whatever. And I'm thinking, well, thank God I didn't have one of those big long southern names. You know? 
<laughs> yeah. and a middle name and, <laughs> and the rest. Yeah. <laughs> Down I mean, uh, more country than Bobby Jean Couch. I mean, that's the country that's yeah, name. Yeah, that is a pretty, pretty, pretty country name. But it's a good country name. There's a good I, woman with that name. I had an uncle named Buddy Brooks. Really? Oh, that's a good one too. And he loved cars big time. He just had a NASCAR car name. But he was born before NASCAR existed. It just kind of fit him. Oh, yeah. You know, his car uh, hobby, and then NASCAR comes along right when he's of age, and he had a NASCAR named Buddy Brooks. Wow. He used to drive a tanker for Texaco. Oh. <laughs> That's interesting. That had to be an interesting job. Driving a tanker. Yeah, you know, I was talking to him one night and said, that must have been dangerous, one of the most dangerous jobs. And he said, nope, it's driving uh, flatbeds with steel plates behind you. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. There's, there's no surviving that. He said, you can get out of a tanker if you're rolling, possibly. Yeah. But you can't get out of a, you can't get out of that because it's going to come and just... It'll come at you. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be bad. And actually, he never got hurt driving a tanker. He was he got uh, getting towards retirement. He got a box truck just delivering product to Texaco mm -hmm. stations like oil or whatever. Yeah. And somebody messed the shipment order up. Yeah. They, they put something early in the route towards the back. So he walked across the boxes to get it. And as he was walking back, he stepped on the box that was a half fill and uh, messed his hip up oh. and and back up. And right. that that really was the beginning of the end. He never, I mean, it took about 10 years, but. Well, and driving yeah. isn't really that good on your back anyway. It's, you know. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, I was. I but was you, know, you know how you miss a step? Like you missed the bottom step? Yeah. It's like he missed the bottom three steps. Oh, good lord! So, really tweaked him. Yeah, because the other leg's still up, and so. Wow. Yeah. I can imagine. Plus, plus, plus he's carrying a box. He wasn't just walking. Oh. He, yeah. Oh, that's right. Because he had. Oh my gosh, that yeah. weight on top of it. Holy cow! Humans. Humans. I saw yeah. something. I, hey. Go back to that. Go back to that. Uh, the first time I'm from Southwest, Southwest Virginia and never heard it there. But when you get in East Tennessee and back over to Western Carolina, that's what they say. Ewans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Stevie. Well, I saw something kind of scary. I was at this, this city south of me and the, there's two highways that cross there and this, this truck, we have a lot of uh, um, bagged like potting soil and other kinds of things, fertilizers and stuff that go out on these flatbeds. And this right. guy was doing probably 50, 55 and a 35. And we're coming up on an intersection that I know has one of those red light cameras. And I'm watching this guy and I'm thinking he's going to kill somebody if he's not careful because there's a lot of people that drive that road and a lot of people pulling out in this little town that he's going through and yeah I, there's no way he could stop that rig no way got flashed right. and i'm like <laughs> i was like laughing because served you right dude maybe you won't kill somebody next time That's just, <laughs> I, I literally get scared because i have been on i-5 uh, on our interstate and I-205, which is our veterans um, highway right now. That's what the, the other name for it. Um, and watch these big rig drivers driving uh, aggressively and just plain dangerously and had to call our state troopers on him because it was, it was getting absolutely insane here for a while. Yeah. Yeah, I think Jeff Foxworthy said Ewan's was y'all plus 20. 
<laughs> how many is that? <laughs> That's like how wide, how many chickens is that wide? <laughs> <laughs> Ewans. I hadn't heard of that in a long time. Lived, I like those kind of words. Lived in That's Knoxville like ninety to ninety six. Like I said, my family's from Southwest Virginia. I never heard Ewans until I got there. They didn't say y'all. They said Ewans. Oh, was... Thank you for hanging out with us. Shooting the breeze. Sorry, Julie. No, nah, that was all. Good night. Thanks. Thanks for bringing it up, Prep. I hadn't thought about that in decades. Yeah. yeah. They're pretty bad about the parts of Georgia, too. Yeah. North. I don't know what we've got out here. We're kind of Oh, we have kind of weird talk, but I don't know if there's anything that's really fun or funny or anything. You know, it's not like out there. There might be, but I can't think of anything right now. Must be related to youngins. But the youngins, yeah. Youngins, hey, youngins. I use yeah. youngins a lot. People look at me like, what? <laughs> I'm like the young ones, <laughs> the kids, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That might be why I say onions. Onion, yeah, with a J. I know. It's just habit. <laughs> Take the Y off, you got onions. <laughs> I, I run a lot of my stuff together, like yank or something, you know? Yeah. Improve. I do that a lot. Make your own words up. Together, yeah. Yeah. Run away. Away. It's like, they ain't gonna do it again. Or <laughs> it yeah. That's hillbilly talk. They understand it though. Yeah. Oh yeah. The there only was... only slang I never caught up with was uh, East Coast. What were they? Were Guineas, right? Yeah, thank God they could point and stuff because you could not understand, and it's a derivative of old English. They're kind of oh. isolated on the inside of the bay, and descendants from the English. And I mean, it was just. What do you think that was? About like Cockney English or something that got bastardized? You yeah. you could not really understand them at all. Well, and then you've got the Celtic language. Um, you know, you've got Scottish and Irish and Welsh, and not, you've got not, 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 that's the thing. This is the east coast of Virginia, I know, but I'm saying because people came from those areas, and you not, had not, 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 no, these, these are they go way back to the colonial period. The east coast is by British, and the mountains are Scott Irish, so their slang is completely different from the Scott Irish, and oh, they're, they're, you're saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, they actually studied Tangier Island to see what uh, Old English, try to get a grasp of what Old English was because they were isolated. Oh, but yeah. The, but the Guineas lived on the, let's see, west side of Chesapeake Bay. And okay. so their, their language just kind of developed its own way to where people couldn't understand them. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's actually kind of cool, but, I mean, that's crazy, too. <laughs> Well, I think because you think of how connected everybody is, but there's still things that people will say that I don't understand or something I will say that someone looks at me kind of funny. I think out here I'm going to have to learn how to speak Spanish because we have so many Hispanics because they're farm, farm workers and gas yeah. workers and all that kind of stuff out here. It's a um, well-established community. I mean, no. I told my neighbor she gets to teach me. She laughs. She goes, okay. <laughs> I, I like that better, Amy. Know what I mean? I like that better than like. It drives me crazy. These young people say, I was like so tired. Like, well, like, like oh my God. Yeah, I mean, you're not like so tired. You were so tired. You're, you know. Yeah, that's Valley Girl talk. Yeah. And I, I, I felt like I was run over by a bus. That's the proper use. But to say I, uh, I was like so tired, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, they just use it as a spacer now. Like, you know what I mean? When they're trying to say something, then they like, you know what it's I mean? A, it's it's a hum. It's a hum. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, just gotten, uh, yeah, language has gotten really lazy, sloppy. You know, it's not like it used to be. Well, the guinea got it right. I just don't understand them. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> as long as you understand him, there's a there's a there's like a detective show that I watch on one of the PBS, you know, British television, whatever. And they got this one old guy on there, and he just he's rolling off these words, and nobody I couldn't understand him. Not even if he's talking slow, but everybody in town knows, you know. And you got these guys that will come in, and they'll they go. What did he say? And somebody will decipher it. But man, he's he's quite a character, but he speaks in a whole nother language and everybody knows what he's saying. I'm like, how do you do that? Yeah. 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 I don't know if I don't know if <laughs> 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 Yeah. We're not here in the background. I hear some music and somebody talking in the background. Oh, that's that's the television at Jules' house. You watching the news? Oh, no, he's watching talk shows trying to figure out why there's not enough men. <laughs> we haven't had any good really good um, guys, male um, moderator, not moderators, hosts. You know, they do the late night, but they wouldn't do daytime. And I think like with daytime, there's just, it's, they figured there's a lot of women there. I mean, you had soap operas and you had the women on the talk shows. Though they do like, I don't know if they do them there, but here they have like these um these news media shows where they're more like a talk show and there's usually usually a guy and a and a gal but the woman is always the one who's leading leading the thing she's always the, the main host which i yeah. think is a little crazy but it it panders more to the women anyway and i don't know if it's just that women consume that kind of stuff more than men or i don't know I know they like to talk. <laughs> hey, I was married to a guy who could out talk just about anybody. I kid you not. He had the southern. He had the. He had the southern goodbye down to a four-hour art. <laughs> You know, funny. Ben was Ben's family was from Missouri, and he actually sounded like he was from Missouri, but he never lived there. <laughs> Did more than Jules? More than Jules? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Amy's picking more than Jules. What? What? <laughs> I had to go do something. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did y'all say? I watched the replay now. No, I just thought I'd probably <laughs> watch the more talk shows to see why there wasn't more men on there. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. more more than Jules, what? Yeah. But I don't know. That's your, homework come out for next week. that's your homework for next week is to find out the answer to that. <laughs> I got, no, my homework is this damn disease chapter. I don't know how are you supposed to remember all this stuff? Yeah, I can I can imagine. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, let's see, Ben. Uh huh. Oh, you got it now. She just she just today asked me what happened. You're so quiet. Yes, Bradley, that happens here all the yes, time. Goodbye. That's right. You can ask Amy and Jules and Boone. You can ask anybody that can four hours over here. I don't talk a lot in person. He's, no, we were talking about the four-hour goodbyes. Mm. <laughs> so, goodbyes. It's really yeah. Weird. We take I've southern, catching, southern goodbyes catching. are longer oh. here. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've been catching myself kind of doing that kind of a thing where I, because I, I'm here by myself. I don't have anybody to talk to. Go talk to a neighbor, and I'm, and I remember 
two or three things that were good stories that I wanted to tell. And so we're standing and it's like an hour later after I first said I was going to say goodbye. And I'm, I'm just going, I'm turning into my husband. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be only, he never knew when to leave, when to let the person leave. That was the bad part. Ta-ta for now. Oh then, yeah. Hey, guess what? So I've got, I got another bird feeder, a deluxe hopper with two suet boxes on the end. Yeah. And the neighbor has a squirrel infested in the top of his garage. Has been for years. Um, anyway, here they come. Here comes the squirrels. Uh, and I learned that the most annoying bird is actually a robin. I mean, they worm, which can sometimes, you know, they'll end up messing up roots and stuff but they'll also get in fights over territory and i saw it the other day two two robins <laughs> fighting over their own territory two robins fighting over a worm in a corn bed <laughs> <laughs> hey. i mean they're just they're low level flying and flopping around i'm like come yeah. on God, are you kidding me yeah. Jeez. Like got, you give them everything. The bird that's causing just a whole lot of trouble are the starlings here. They're insane. And they actually, like a couple days ago, uh, a group of them killed a um, northern flicker to get the nest. Literally. Really? The northern flicker. The flicker was trying to protect its nest. Yeah. A friend saw the whole thing go down. Uh. Yeah. She said it was awful. Yeah. So, and I, they make a whole lot of noise on this roof because they, they pick all the bugs are off. They get into the um, gutters and they poke around in the stuff that's laying in the gutters and if there's anything in there. And I mean, they do eat bugs and stuff, but they're, they're bad for like berry crops and stuff. They're, they decimate berry crops or they can, especially blueberries. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. The robins are messing with my blueberries, too. Oh, yeah, because they're fruit eaters. Yeah. Yeah. They, they worm the gardens. They tear my corn up. Hmm. They hit the blueberries. And they'll still eat out of the feeder. They like yeah. variety, I guess. <laughs> Boone said, uh, hi, Beth. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hi, Beth. Let's say hi to her, too. I haven't seen her in a while. <laughs> Patty says hi too. Hi. <laughs> she says hi. <laughs> she well, obviously she's not working tomorrow, so. Oh yeah, BB guns. Mm -hmm. And uh, starlings are not songbirds, so they're legal to shoot. <laughs> well. At least I don't think they're songbirds. God help us if they are, because they. Well, they're mimickers. They're in the magpie family. Yeah, so you can actually teach them how to talk, but I'm like, no, oh, thank you. Oh, they're yeah. Whoa. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, you can teach them how to talk. I didn't know that either. I just found that out like a couple months ago. I ran onto a video a gal that's got this one, and I think it's the one where he's called the the channel is called the mouth because this bird is always making all these different sounds. He even sounds like a semi truck doing that, you know. Um, putting on the air brakes <laughs> wow. just like they're crazy yeah i didn't know they did that i know they'll yeah i heard what sounded like a hawk but i knew it wasn't and i figured out that it was the stupid starlings making the hawk man hawk noise well i know the cat and uh mocking or in that same grouping that can do, do the yeah, other bird whistles. Yeah. Walking. Yeah. Pretty good. I wonder, if the, I wonder if the starlings, does the starling do that too? It must. A starling will mimic all kinds of sounds and birds. Yeah. So it, it must yeah. be out of that family then. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's the magpie group. Magpie. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I just found it fascinating. This one cat bird is hanging with these other birds. 
they will, you know, bully it. Yeah. <laughs> you, it wasn't wolf whistling at you. you you're calling. You're talking. Amy's talking about it. Cat calling him. <laughs> What's she talking about? Jules, that's it, Amy. We're done. God, every time we go live, you end it. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not. We're not going to look for houses for you anymore. You have to do it. You have, sure? to, do it. You have to do it yourself. That's a talker. <laughs> I always laugh at the mockingbirds. They like to do a hawk when they get close to the nest and stuff. A predator does. They'll try to do a hawk sound and all kind of stuff. They're funny. Well, I wonder if that was what the starlings were doing because I know they're great nest robbers and they'll actually take over nests. And uh, one of the things they like to do is to lay their eggs in among other birds' eggs and their babies will outcompete the other babies. And so they're the ones that live and the other ones die. That's oh, what God. And the yeah. house sparrows also do that and also the house finches. Bunch of Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> it's a wild world out there. <laughs> Nazi birds. <I'm> sorry. <laughs> Nazi oh, birds. Nazi. We're coming to we're just going to lay our eggs in your nest. <laughs> that's that's how it's, that's how it's going to be. We're replacing your birds with our birds. You'll that's get that's what happens. They knock them out of the nest and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what happens. God almighty. Yeah, I watched a documentary well, on it. It was brutal. Yeah. Well, the crows. Said, sorry. Uh, uh. The crows. The crows in Portland. The um, the group that used to live in our trees. Uh, they would they would rob squirrel nests, and you'd see them carting off a, a baby squirrel. And I mean, just the idea of them tearing into that baby was just disgusting. But that's they, they kept the squirrel population at bay that way. We would have had hundreds of squirrels. Jules, you need some of them. <laughs> I want that. That's there you go. Train your crows. Well, they're training crows that they can drink. Because I had VOCs in my water because there was a stupid hose underneath the yeah. underneath they, that nobody yeah. told, you know. And now I'm dealing with a brand new water heater that now has the bacteria that is causing things to smell like a sewer. The uh. top one, you know, and so I'm like, well, this is lovely. And I have to think, I have to um put bleach in that and let it sit for a number of hours. I don't think there's any other way to do it unless I pay somebody to do it. And it'll be hundreds of dollars to do that. So Ugh. I've already spent on between getting the new water heater and uh, other things. I've already spent close to two grand just on that. You know, that doesn't include, and I'm trying to get a guy to come over getting contractors is nobody calls you back. Well, you're in a manufactured home park. You're a little lady. Uh, no, you uh, it is, it's not that. It's everywhere. Is it? Yeah. Anyhow, because I know one of the one of the plumbers, the last plumber I had in here, I was just aghast at what he said. He said, well, you know, I make all my money over like in West Lynn and Oregon City and these other places where they got nicer houses is basically what he was saying. That's where his real money is made. And so it was. he basically had a couch so... Um, you're just this little jo job over here and, and you're not really what I'm about. And I'm like, okay, make us feel important. That's it, but, but that's still part of the problem. It's not enough competition because there's not enough people doing trade work. I yeah. mean, there's a huge shortage in all of the trades other than carpentry. Yeah. And that's where you get a lot of immigration push. That's why you see a lot of immigrants doing trade work. But unless you have a massive amount of competition, they're obviously going to go. Right. There was a, this was this was thir 25 years ago at my brother's house in Williamsburg, Virginia. And all he wanted was a, a, a pipe extension to move a toilet three feet. Yeah. And the guy just to get rid of the job, the guy said three thousand dollars. But oh. it wasn't like he didn't want to do the job. It's just that's what his time was worth. So if you don't have enough competition, then yeah. the price goes up for the work and then it works both ways. You can't afford it and they can't afford it either because if they're working for you, they're not working for somebody else. It's, well, all, it's all American. This guy lives five blocks. He was, home. he was on his way home and he's 
probably he was in his mid fifties. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'll, you I'll know, hire the other guy who put the water heater in is what I'll do. You know, you know how many, this is 180,000 people in this County. You know oh, how yeah. many appliance repair, man, there are left. I have no idea. Well, it's, it's ridiculously. Zero. Well, yeah. And they Zero. don't make appliances to last anyway. See, and here yeah. we have appliance repair. But, that, but, that's, that's, but, that's, that, but that's not the point. The point is 180,000 people between yeah. two major metro areas. And the last one, I know him because I had to use him a couple of times. And he retired. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you have no choice. What's up, Square County? How you doing? You got to get on YouTube and teach yourself and do it yourself, Patty. It's what you got to do. I know. This girl can't do some of that stuff. <laughs> like, there's no way. I, could, I couldn't even get down on the ground to get under my house. Let me tell you that. There's no way. I couldn't do it. Me neither. Yeah, so, yeah. M Michael, maybe, but. Yeah. No, nah. we've got. We've got some good. We've got some good. Uh, good guys around here. I actually, the uh, we have a Do It Best Hardware store. It's GW Hardware is what we call it all the time. But Do It Best is like <laughs> or some of those other ones. They have uh, great guys in there, like a bunch of old timers, and they know all of the good contractors and whoever you need to fix anything. So mm -hmm. found the first guy, and the second guy I knew because a neighbor had him do something had him do something she also had a piece of hose underneath her house too so that, that yeah. big no-no and these guys aren't telling people about it and it's an easy fix it doesn't take any time to fix it either it's an easy 380 bucks really well but anyhow square uh, county Oh, yeah. I, is Square County a channel change name, or do, do I not know Square County? Square County, is that name not familiar to me either? I'm not on YouTube, so I don't know. I, I can't remember. <laughs> You're not going to say, I'm getting old, I can't remember names anymore? <laughs> I used that one. Well, actually, it's true. <laughs> Hey, hey. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised too, Buff Orpington. Other than that water issue. Yeah. Right. Where did Amy go? Did she check out? Did I miss no. her seat? And did she leave? I thought or maybe she might... No, there's. I don't know that. Odyssey has oh, been that was the last one. Oh well. <laughs> so, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to the owner and see if he will uh, talk to him about working with me on getting this ridiculous yard in the back. That's a beautiful yard, but it needs to be completely regraded. Um, there's places I could break an ankle walking across it, and I have to mow it. So I'm going to talk to him about seeing if we can't come to some agreement on how that needs to happen and when. I'd rather have it done this fall because that's the best time to do lawns and stuff here. But then I can probably get the uh, the CATV wires that are running crisscross across my lawn that take up so much space back there that you know I can't dig anywhere back there. I can get those removed if we do this. That's my other ulterior motive. <laughs> uh, that's, the link for the panel. Oh. that's just a link for the panel. I was making sure it was still in the, in the, uh, because oh, I don't have a keyboard. Up. That's just panel. We're getting ready to call it for a little while. So if anybody else oh, wants to come hang out and shoot it for a little while, come up yeah. and shoot the breeze, hang out. <clears throat> I think it's time for me to go get some dinner. I haven't had any dinner yet, and it's 8.15 here, so I need to get myself some dinner before it gets any closer to bedtime. It's been fun. Thanks for thanks for having me. Good to see everybody. 
Uh, let me get my camera on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Good to yeah. see you too. Let's see if I can get this fired up for you. <laughs> now it's going to be a standard day tomorrow. <laughs> no luck. No luck. All right. Well, God bless everybody. We'll see you next time. Oh, good night, Good Patty. luck. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone now. That does not apply. Doesn't apply. That's for you. <laughs> I wonder if I could re. I bet I could refill this thing. I'm yeah. sure. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. I can get me some more butane in there if that's what it takes. Yeah, you should be able to do it. I could just put some gas in there, don't you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but hey, make sure you film that when you try to fire it up. <laughs> I'm on fire. I'm on fire. <laughs> oh, Ricky Bob. Oh. I am on fire. I'm gone. <laughs> All right. There we go. Well, that's a cheap writer down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go back to the original before I get in trouble. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, I can't believe. Oh, yeah. I, can't, I can't believe uh, somebody put that hose in like that, man. Good Lord. I yeah. mean that, that's like a that's a temporary, like maybe a month. Yeah, that's some cheap, cheap, cheap. Yeah, he fallen and he can't get up. He's been she's been hanging around with who's that guy? What's his name? The guy that posted the. <laughs> <What name? laughs> the guy. <laughs> I got to break jewels out for one one episode this summer. Yeah, on a, on a garden video, just uh, you know. I'll come and do that one when you do it. <laughs> what? I said I'll come and join when you do it. It'd be fun. No, not a lie. I'm talking a jewels video, just doing. Oh, okay, yeah. So what you, you do here is you. Spray this herbicide right around the bottom of everything. <laughs> Don't worry about your maters. It ain't going to kill them unless you hit the leaves. <laughs> right, and let's see. Tonight it was country style ribs. Uh, the two-day slow cook ribs, Google potatoes, corn out of the garden, mm. and for some reason or another, crab cake, real crab cake. I don't, I don't know. Uh, real, real uh, crab cakes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and baked beans. And let's see, for dessert is the uh, Bobby's famous strawberry uh, something. Anyway, it's the homemade strawberry jam, strawberry syrup, mm. out of the garden, and uh, graham cracker crust. And then it's good. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Man, anti, every time we go and we meet in the live, no matter where we at, we swap what we had for lunch. Sometimes he, he kicks my butt a lot because I'll go out to eat and have like Arby's, and he comes out with this big five star meal. You know. <laughs> Potato leek soup, veggies from the garden. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Even from the homestead like that is living like kings, in my opinion. Uh, what did Bradley have for breakfast? Let's get an Australian perspective. Yeah, which actually wasn't that long ago, was it? It's been so long since I've been live, I can't figure the hours out anymore, but. Right. Well, it it could have been that long ago. For you, Bradley. It wasn't that long ago, was it? I do I have it backwards? No, nah, it's probably about three o'clock over there. Is it? Yeah, it might. Yeah, maybe lunch would be more appropriate. I think so. I, I get it all backwards. He had cocoa pops. <laughs> hey, that's all right too. 
Is it that a, a channel on one of those illicit uh, platforms, Cocoa Pops? <laughs> <laughs> it very well could be. Hey, welcome to Cocoa Pops. Yeah. See if I'd have popped up. Man. Oh, yeah, it is. And you'd automatically knew I watched it. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It might be. Right, Truth cool. sayer. Let's see. <laughs> no, almost. Oh. That's half. No, there it was. That's true. Dang. He's, watch, he's watching Cocoa Pops. My goodness. That is all you need, Anti. It can be a meal by itself. And coffee. It's one twenty. Said twelve. Twelve a day and two. Okay. Right. He said one one twenty. Yeah, twelve a day and two. So now we'll know we can keep up with it a little better. I miss Bradley. I need to get over there and see what he's posted. I watched a whole lot, probably six weeks. Yeah. Been, been uh, too busy, man. It's spring, you know, stuff to do. Yeah, that's our favorite Aussie beekeeper. Mm. Uh, I ain't seen I got to go. I got to check out a few of them. Darren's come out with a new video. I think I only watched half of that because the green ghost came in and I just let it play. I'm trying to get everything set up, but... Yeah, it's been really busy, man, when you, you know, and all I got left now is drip tape in the alpha garden that I'm done. Well, I got to trellis up my lemon boys and my speckled rope. Got to come up with a system for them, but. <coughs> yeah, I'm, ty I'm tying about every other day now. I'm just using tea steaks, you know? Yeah. And I imagine after this rain fiasco, we're going to get a big bolt. Oh, yeah, especially over here because I properly side-dressed every plant we had and it worked out perfect. Mm -hmm. A lot of it probably got washed away, but still, I know it's going to have an effect on it. Blood man, the blue I bean, mean, I put it all out. I mean, really, with all this rain... Might at least get curl on the tomatoes, curly leaf. Yeah, and the two bottom, if your corn ain't at least two foot, the bottom leaves might get a little yellow. Mm -hmm. Just the two very bottom ones. But at least it's cool. I mean, most viruses around here, I mean, not viruses, uh, fungus and bacteria. Yeah. That shouldn't be a problem. The link, uh, Square County Homestead, the link is pinned in the top, in the very, very top. That's not a, a, like a, that's not a live link. That's an actual link to the book. But it's, it's the one pinned at the top of the chat. And that link will take you to all three options of the book, the digital paper and hardback. It's all three on that link. The Poultry Scrolls, Amazon, it'll pop right up. <clears throat> if it doesn't, throw in Michael Childers. Yeah, and I really appreciate it. We got tons of videos too on the subject. The, hey, the Kindle book, if you get the Kindle, uh, are the underlying things can you click it in the Kindle and it'll open? Yes, yeah, it's all like it's all been digitized to where you can actually click on the uh, like our link to uh, Grubterra. Mm -hmm. It's actually a live link. You can click on it from the book and go straight over there and use that code and stuff cool. too. Everything is some of it. Now I did take out. They automatically transferred. Like <clears throat> we have a recipe for the uh, the magic water or whatever the pig blister, mm -hmm. like garlic and the raw vinegar. Everything was underlined. If you click on it, it would take you to an Amazon site where you could actually buy it from the book uh, and I took all that out because I didn't really care about people clicking and going straight over to buy garlic or whatever because it wasn't even my preference of what product it was so I took a bunch of that out but left a lot of the live links and other stuff that'll take you to the information but, and like I said if you just buy the book it'll give you a free e-reader so you don't have to have actual Kindle fire or nothing like that you, they'll give you a free reader just in case but yeah it's all over there 
Y'all getting rain tomorrow. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Probably. Well, they call for it all weekend. I know we got it yesterday, all day today. It ain't stopped if we've got rain all day today. But I don't know. Okay. There is 60 60. Yeah, so yeah, we probably will. It'd be our luck. My freaking corn's gonna get washed away. That's the newest stuff we've put in so far. I think our beans will be good. Flooded beans. Uh, I hope not, man. I might go ahead. I was trying to save those taters back to make a tater video because of that soil mix I used. Yeah. But I might just pull them tomorrow, man. It's too much rain. I mean, they're done, you know. I planted them in February, so we've been eating on them a couple of weeks, maybe three. No, no. Yeah. Hmm. What is this? The 28th? To, yeah, almost three weeks, you know. They've been ready three weeks, but I've just been leaving them there. But now everything's, you know, this died. It's done. And I was saving it back to make a video, but I guess I better pull them in the morning because that was a boatload of rain here in the last 24 hours. Yeah, it's been a lot here, dude. It's I went a lot. need a boat to get to the driveway because it's like flooded in the front yard. I might go out there tonight. What the hell? Did all of us get a day off for tomorrow? Bobby's off. I'm off. You're off. Amy's off. Boone's off. I think so. Dang. Square, did you see Square County? The first book. I hear you. I don't blame you. <laughs> Me too. I do too. I'm trying to get undigitalized more than less. I got up at six this morning, grabbed coffee, sat outside, watched my birds. Not the chickens, the wildlife birds, and just. Yeah. Yeah, I grabbed the eggs, pushed some water off their roof and uh this ain't a hard roof and i pushed them off of canopy over our outdoor kitchen i just piddled for three hours uh, not only didn't do any digital i didn't even turn a television or radio on i just chilled out three hours yeah well i forgot sorry I mean, either way so you do have the day off either way thanks <laughs> Amy's a bon bon eating maniac. Amy is a maverick cowboy. She relived the pioneer days, leaving Yakin County, North Carolina, and not taking the easy way home. Yeah. She went through two lane highway <laughs> <laughs> into Virginia. Oh, my word. She went through Damascus, then got on 81. We escaped hours, Amy, last two weeks ago. I think we got another or so left before I pull mine. They are starting to yellow up, though. But I usually wait till about three weeks after I after I escape them on the hard ones. I know the other ones don't, but uh, we might ready to get all ours in too. Louisa, I'll beat you to. Some undetailable pain. Constitution of Care State number 27. I hear you, bro. Louisiana? Yeah. Yeah. About time. But they haven't. <clears throat> My uh, elephant garlic has. We escaped him like two weeks ago. But everything else has. Check out Bradley. Oh, that's right. They're having their cold season right now. He's freezing at 50 degrees. I was too today. I'll admit it. I'll admit it. It was cold, man. For them, it probably is. For freezing. them, that's probably really cold. Yeah. I think he's up a little bit towards the tropic. Yeah, at 50s, I'm outside with no coat on, long sleeve shirt, kicking it, working like crazy because I can get stuff done, you know? Yeah. 15, 55. But, but it was nippy. Hey, I still got my fire running back here, man. Memorial Day weekend, run the fire and take the chill out. Cold today, man. 
It's like cold, cold. Mm -hmm. Good day to chill out, though. I like overcast days with a drizzle, not a heavy rain. You know, drink cold. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Lordy. Okay. Oh, my God, that was funny. I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Amy. <laughs> That's a lot of chickens. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't want to take a break. <laughs> I know I didn't just say that for real, but I did. Oh, oh. my God. And not, a, and not a peep. Uh, see how it gets when you stay on too late. Get yeah. Uh, it's 11.30. We might need to get off here. Yeah, it sounds like I got to give my pillow some head, too. All right. <laughs> Appreciate it, <laughs> Coming in. Oh, my word. And I guess somebody else probably going to give their pillow head. I don't know why. It's... I want to eat before I do any of that. Way I past my bedtime, but there's no reason to get up early if it's going to be raining again. Yeah, I know. If it ain't, oh, I got to well. run jet tape. Even though I won't need it for another week or so. I still got to. <clears throat> well, <laughs> you might not be busy with those chicks. <laughs> <laughs> I got some good ideas, man. I'm going to make a <laughs> Oh my word! Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for having me, brother. I'm gonna check out of here, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Hey, man, thank you for coming up. Appreciate it. <laughs> that was a quick leave. All right, I'm gonna remove him so y'all can see my fat butt better. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for coming in and uh, hanging out with me. And I'll fix the rest of it. The front part of the side will look like a video and the rest of it. So let's have fun. So thanks, everybody, for coming in. Appreciate it. And we'll try to do it again next Sunday. And watch for the new video coming out Wednesday, as usual. All right, thank you all. I'm going to end the broadcast right now.